Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first time, you have clicked on one of the best videos ever. Like, no, seriously. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really do appreciate you. If you are interested in buying your home through the NACA program, if you've been hearing about the NACA program and you're curious, as to what it's all about if you want to hear my NACA journey my husband and I's NACA journey then this is the channel for you I will link my playlist up above and you can go and binge watch all of those NACA videos that I have uploaded thus far and to all of my returning subscribers y'all are family and I appreciate y'all for coming back to check me out so y'all Today's video is one of the long awaited videos that I've been wanting to put out for a minute. I've been so nervous for some reason to put this video out um, only because I am one of those type of people who I don't like to give misleading information, false information, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm always about giving you the real deal, like the real type deal. And I was like, okay. I just want to make sure that when I put this video out, when I record this video, that I'm giving them the correct information. And you know, things are subject to change as well. Processes are subject to change. So today's video is all about how you can determine your affordability amount as well as the payment shock amount. So keep in mind, disclaimer, disclaimer, I am not a mortgage counselor. I do not work for NACA. All of my thoughts, my opinions, my knowledge comes from going through the NACA program and learning as I went through the program and reading, doing my own research. And I suggest that you do your research as well. You do your research by clicking on this channel and also other channels as well that have tips and tricks on how to navigate your way through the NACA program and also by reading the NACA workbook, which is available to anyone on NACA's website. So let's get into the video. I have my notes here because I don't want to leave anything out. If you are new to NACA, NACA is one of America's best mortgage programs. It is offered to those who have any type of income or who have low to moderate type income. It is also offered to those who have a substantial amount of income as well. So with NACA, there are no down payments, no closing costs and no fees. There are no PMIs, which is private mortgage interest. And your mortgage is always going to be fixed it will never increase over a period of time. You also get to buy down your interest rate. So if that ain't enough to go ahead and say, I want to sign up for this program, I don't know what is. If you guys are currently getting ready to be qualified and you are getting ready to sign up bank application to lock in today's interest rate, today's interest rate is 2% for a 30 year mortgage and 1.375 for a 15 year mortgage and that is for priority members if you are considered non-priority people with higher income then the interest rate is three percent for 30 years and 2.375 for 15 years and to let you guys know NACA only works with bank of america for their lender uh years ago NACA used to work with Bank of America and Wells Fargo, but now it's strictly just Bank of America. I've been getting a lot of questions and comments about what is the income limit for NACA? What is the income limit? How do you determine what your income limit is or what your affordability is? So NACA does not have income limits. NACA strictly goes based off your total monthly gross income. So your income will determine how much of a home that you can afford. So based off your income, this is how they determine or categorize you as priority or non-priority. So those with a substantial amount of higher income will be considered non-priority. And those who have low to moderate income are considered priority. When you are considered priority, honey, you have the advantage to purchase anywhere you would like, opposed to those who are categorized as non-priority when you are non-priority you cannot purchase anywhere you would like 
you can only purchase in a priority area so there are some downfalls to making more income but at the same time it's not a bad thing you just make more income compared to some who don't so let's talk about affordability so basically affordability is determined by your total monthly gross income so your mortgage payment cannot exceed 31 percent of your total monthly income NACA also looks at your debt to income ratio which cannot exceed 40 percent so what we're going to do we are going to do an example of how to determine what your affordability amount is as well as your payment shock now your affordability amount is considered your mortgage amount now please keep in mind that these are only examples estimates this is not the real deal these are made up numbers now i'm just trying to give you an idea of what you can look at to determine well this amount is what i could possibly afford and this amount is what i could possibly be putting up for my payment shock of course you would have to change out the numbers because these are made up numbers this is not an actual amount that somebody used this is just numbers that i made up so let's get into the example of what i came up with about how to determine what your affordability amount is as well as your payment shock so the first thing that we're going to do, and I'm looking at my notes, so if you see me look down, I'm looking at my notes because I wrote it all down. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just come up with some numbers for your monthly debts. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come up with student loans. So you have a monthly obligation of $200 per month in student loans. The second thing is you have a monthly obligation of credit card payments of $150 per month. And then your third monthly debt obligation is your car payment, which is going to be $300 per month. So your total monthly debts. going to be $650 and so I'm trying to make it real pretty for y'all so let's see we'll just leave it like that so $650 so now we're going to come down and we're going to put the monthly total income and this is going to be based off just the one person household. So your total monthly gross income is going to be, we're going to say $3,000. Now that's what you bring in before any taxes, anything is taken out. That's your monthly gross income. Okay, so your affordability, again, is determined by your income and your monthly obligations. Um, your mortgage cannot exceed 31% of your total monthly gross income. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take your total monthly gross income and we're going to multiply that by 31%. So we're going to take $3,000 times... 31% and that is going to come up to be $930. I don't know why I said it like that y'all <laughs> but your total so your monthly total income times 31% is going to be $930. So after NACA determines what your mortgage cannot exceed which is 31% of your income then they do your debt to income ratio which cannot exceed 40 percent so now we're going to do your total monthly income which is three thousand dollars times 40 percent and that amount is going to come up to be twelve hundred dollars So now you have 
your 31%, which is 930, and then you have your 40%, which is $1,200. So this $1,200 that we came up with when we did your monthly income times the 40% cannot exceed this amount after all debts and mortgage payments are added together. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this $1,200 that we got from the monthly total income times the 40%. We're gonna take that $1,200 and we're going to subtract that by your total monthly debts, which is $650. So we're going to take the 1200 minus the 650, which is going to be 550, $550. Now this amount is considered the affordability amount, which you cannot exceed unless you buy down. So now that we have the affordability amount that you cannot exceed, which is the 550, let's say your monthly rent amount is $600. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the $600 oops, minus the affordability amount, which is 550. So your $600, which is your rent, minus the $550, which is your affordability amount, is going to be $50. Now this is going to be your payment shock. This is going to be the amount that you will have to save for three to six months throughout the remaining time of you being NACA qualified. So this payment shock is what NACA needs to see go into your savings account each month, each week, however much you choose to put in, however often. This is kind of like a breakdown of what I came up with based off my information. Now, this is not anything near what my numbers are for my personal situation. I just made these numbers up. I came up with the monthly debts. This is not what my monthly debts look like, of course. Um, this is totally not my monthly gross income, but this is just a estimate and an idea of what you can see written out so you can kind of get an idea of what your total monthly um, affordability amount would be for your home and what your payment shock will be. Now, like I said before, I am not a mortgage counselor. I am just here to kind of guide you and kind of help you figure out some things as you go through the program and as you wait for your first initial intake meeting and as you get through those intake meeting appointments with your mortgage counselor. So you can get an idea of what your payment shock will be based off this information that I just gave to you. Also your affordability amount. Now, if you make $6,000 combined income, let's say it's two of you, then you would just change your total monthly gross income. And then you would times that by the 31% and also your 40%. If you have more monthly debts, of course, you would just, <clears throat> excuse me, you would just list them down under your monthly debts and add them all together. So this is just an estimate. This is just an idea of what you can see, how to determine what your affordability amount is, as well as your payment shock. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that example. 
Now, please keep in mind, I am not a mortgage counselor, so I am only just trying to basically help you determine what your estimate amount is. This is not going to be something that you follow straight to the T. Um, I wrote down this information because I wanted to make sure that you guys have this information if you don't know. But basically, the maximum mortgage amount is based on your rent, your income, your current debts, and regular pattern of savings. The maximum mortgage amount is calculated by using NACA's current interest rate, buy down, estimated taxes and insurance, and your HOA. So everybody's situation is totally different. Everyone may not have an HOA. I per se do have an HOA. So if you don't have an HOA, then you can exempt that from your maximum mortgage amount, which is your affordability. But if you do have an HOA, all of that information is taken into consideration as to as far as how much your monthly maximum or mortgage amount will be. So this is all estimates. This is not the real deal. This is just made up inf made up numbers. So once you get to that point where you are not qualified or probably before you are qualified, your mortgage counselor will give you the numbers, the exact numbers. And also, please keep in mind that numbers or your mortgage amount is subject to change because mine did change. Now, I will say this. My monthly mortgage on my action plan stated 1301. But when I closed, my monthly mortgage was less than that. And then after about six to seven months after I closed, it went down some more. And that was all based off my insurance and my taxes. So, you know, and I'll link that video up above explaining what happened. So just keep in mind that things are subject to change because the numbers have to be accurate. So once everything is said and done, once you are closed, everything is adjusted, you may see a decrease in your mortgage or it may stay the same. But in my case, there was a decrease. Hallelujah. So the more savings, the better, right? But yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button below and become a part of Natasha's Lifestyle YouTube channel. If you are already subscribed to this channel, thank you so much. I appreciate your support and please make sure to hit that like button down below. If you have any questions or if you want to add to this information that I have given out, make sure to leave your comments down below. And as always, I thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.